talk about half-life. Half-life is used when referring to things like radioactive decay in chemistry and drug persistence in the body in medicine. Here are a few drugs and the rough length of time for half the drug to disappear from the body. The actual time it takes does depend on things like body weight, percent body fat, gender, age, genetics, and other factors. For example, THC, which is the active chemical marijuana, takes 1.3 days for it to half-life, meaning for half of the drug to be removed from the body. Adderall takes 10 to 12 hours for half to be removed from the body. Morphine takes 1.5 to 7 hours for half to be removed from the body. You can see that's a pretty wide range, which is why morphine is such a dangerous drug and has to be regulated. Valium takes 20 to 100 hours for half of it to be removed from the body. Again, depending on all of those other factors. When you are calculating a half-life, you can do the same thing for initial value that we did with doubling time. We can just call it capital A sub zero. And then the amount after half is gone will be 0.5 times A sub zero. These half-lives give you enough information to find the continuous decay rate K for a continuous exponential decay equation. Again, you should always aim to find K first if you don't know it. You won't be able to answer questions about the problem without knowing the full model. Let's try one. The half-life of plutonium-238 is 87.7 years. How long will it take for only 10% of the original radiation to be left? Now, before I even tackle this question at the end, I have enough information in the first sentence to develop a model, and I need to do that before I answer the question. So I'm given a half-life in this first sentence, which means I'm going from capital A sub zero to 0 0.5 of capital A sub zero, and I'm doing that in 87.7 years. If we start with a continuous decay model, we'll have Q of T equals, and Q just stands for quantity. Remember, Q of T equals lowercase a e to the kt. Let's plug in what we know. We know that the result will be 0 0.5 capital A sub 0. So that goes in for the Q of T. Lowercase a becomes capital A sub 0. That's the initial amount. We have e to the k times 87.7. And the k times 87.7 is in the exponent. Now to do anything with this, we need to isolate the exponential part, which is the e to the k times 87.7 part. I'm going to divide both sides by a0. We'll do that on the left side and the right side. On the left-hand side, we have 0.5 capital A sub zero divided by capital A sub zero, and the A sub zero is reduced to be one, leaving me with just 0 0.5. On the right side, we reduce A sub zero and A sub zero again, leaving us with E to the, and instead of K times 87.7, I'm just gonna write 87.7K. It's a little bit more natural that way. Now I do have the exponential part isolated, and I can take a log on both sides. Now which log should I take? Well, I have base E, so if I take natural log on both sides, then I have the exact inverse I need to reduce that. So I'm going to do natural log of left paren, right paren on the left, and natural log of left paren, right paren on the right. Now I will drop in the equation from the previous line, giving us natural log of 0.5 equals natural log of e to the 87.7k. Now in this case, we don't need to worry about bringing the exponent in front because we have natural log and e, and those have matching bases. When they have matching bases, that reduces to just be 87.7k. On the left-hand side, I still have natural log of 0 0.5. To solve for k, I need to divide both sides by 87.7. So I'm going to divide by 87.7 on the right and divide by 87.7 on the left, giving us k equals natural log of 0 0.5 divided by 87.7. When I evaluate natural log of 0.5 divided by 87.7, I get a K value of approximately negative 0.0079. Now that shouldn't be a surprise 
because we know that this is an exponential decay problem and the k value should be negative in such a problem. Let's go ahead and rewrite the model now. We have capital Q of t equals a e to the negative 0.0079t. And this decay rate should hold for plutonium no matter what we start with or how long the decay happens for. So now we need to find the answer to the question. We, all of that was just to get the model. And remember, you always want to try to get the model first, get the k value, then the model. And I even wrote that up here, right? Aim to find k first. The reason is because you then have the model. All right. So now in this new question, the, we want to find out how long it takes for only 10% of the original radiation to be left. So if we start with capital A sub zero, we want to only have one tenth of capital A sub zero when we're finished. And the question is, how much time does that take? So let's go ahead and plug these things in. The final amount would be one tenth A sub zero. So I'm going to replace Q of T with that. The initial amount would be capital A sub zero. And then we have E to the negative 0.0079 T. Well, I need to isolate the exponential part to solve for T. So I'm going to isolate E to the negative 0.0079 T. Dividing both sides by A sub zero, dividing by capital A sub zero on the right hand side and dividing by capital A sub zero on the left hand side. It reduces on the left hand side to be one and it reduces out on the right hand side to be one. No more a sub zeros in my problem. I now have one tenth equals e to the negative 0.0079t. And now I have the exponential part isolated, which is great. It's an e base, so it would be very natural here to take a natural log on both sides. Let's take a natural log, left paren, right paren on the left, and a natural log, left paren, right paren on the right. We're going to drop in the equation from the previous line. So natural log of 1 tenth equals natural log of e to the negative 0.0079t on the right hand side. Not much I can do with natural log of 1 tenth, so I'll just rewrite it. But on the right hand side, ln has a base of e and e to the has a base of e. So those are inverses, they undo each other, and we're left with negative 0.0079t. Finally, I want to isolate the t, that's what I'm trying to solve for. So I will divide both sides by negative 0.0079. The negative 0.0079 reduces on the right hand side to be one, leaving us with t equals natural log of 1 tenth divided by negative 0.0079. Evaluating that with Desmos, I get 291.5. And this is all in years, because remember that original half-life was in years. So this is 291.5 years that it will take for only 10% of the original radiation to be left, which is a really long time. Now I'd like you to try a half-life problem on your own. The SSRI antidepressant citalopram has a half-life of 35 hours. If Chris takes 10 milligrams of citalopram right now and does not take any more, how long will it take before there is only 2 milligrams of the original 10 milligrams left in his body? Pause the video and give it a try. See how far you can get on your own. This is super important. We just did a problem when you watched it, so now you should be able to do it, theoretically. Let's see how you do. Okay, we're back. Let's maybe start by declaring a couple of variables here, because there's a lot of information in this problem. First, let's talk about the time. The time in this problem is given in hours. So we're going to let t be the hours since the citalopram was taken. I'm going to let Q be the citalopram remaining in the body. And this is going to be in milligrams. Now we also know that citalopram has a half-life of 35 hours. So we know that it goes from capital A sub zero to 0 0.5 capital A sub zero in 35 hours. And this should be enough information to let us find the K value and the model. 
If we start with our continuous exponential decay model, that would be q of t equals lowercase a e to the kt. In this case, q of t is the amount remaining 0.5 capital A sub 0, lowercase a is capital A sub 0, then e to the k, which we don't know, times t, which is 35. We want to isolate the exponential part, which is e to the k times 35. So let's divide both sides by capital A sub 0. The A sub 0's reduce on both sides to be 1, leaving us with 0 0.5 equals e to the 35k. We now have the exponential part isolated. To undo e to the, we want to take a natural log on both sides. So let's do natural log of left paren, right paren on the left, and natural log of left paren, right paren, on the right hand side. Now we'll drop in the equation from the previous line. So natural log of 0 0.5 equals natural log of e to the 35k. Natural log of 0 0.5 doesn't really do anything, but natural log has a base e, and e to the 35k is also a base e. So this simplifies to be 35k. To finish this, we'll divide both sides by 35. On the right side, the 35s reduce, making 1, and we're left with k equals natural log of 0 0.5 divided by 35, which is negative 0 0.0198. Now we can write the model for citalopram leaving the body. It would be q of t equals lowercase a, the initial amount, times e to the negative 0 0.0198t. Now Chris takes 10 milligrams of citalopram, and so we can now insert that into our model. Q of t equals 10 e to the negative 0.0198t. Our question is how long will it take before there's only 2 milligrams of this original 10 milligrams left in the body? And so that's the final amount. We replace Q of t with 2. So now we have 2 equals 10 e to the negative 0.0198t. We need to solve for this exponential part, e to the negative 0.0198t. We need to isolate this exponential part, e to the negative 0.0198t. We do that by dividing both sides by 10. So we'll divide by 10 on the right and on the left. 2 tenths is simply 0 0.2 on the left. The tens reduce on the right hand side to make 1, leaving us with e to the negative 0.0198t. Now we have isolated the exponential part, and it's at a base of e. So let's go ahead and take a natural log on both sides. Natural log of left paren, right paren on the left. Natural log of left paren, right paren on the right hand side drop in the previous equation. That gives us natural log of 0 0.2 equals natural log of e to the negative 0.0198t. On the left we have natural log of 0 0.2, and on the right the natural log is a base e, and the e to the has a base e. So we'll simplify to be negative 0.0198t. Finally, we want to solve for that t, so we'll divide both sides by negative 0 0.0198, so we'll do that on the right hand side and on the left hand side. On the right hand side the negative 0 0.0198 reduces to be 1, but we still have a t left, so we'll have t equals natural log of 0 0.2 divided by negative 0 0.0198, and evaluating that gives us 81.28 five hours. So it takes more than three days for that 10 milligrams of citalopram to be reduced down to two milligrams in the body.